Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, your pivotal source for insights into the Canadian small and medium-sized enterprise landscape. This is your host SK. SMEs are the heartbeat of our economy, fostering innovation, creating employment and nurturing community spirit across the nation. Their significance is unparalleled, contributing to our collective economic resilience and growth. In every episode, we focus on a critical aspect of our communities highlighting the vital role of supporting local businesses for a prosperous and sustainable future. Today, we are delving into the small business climate in Ontario, exploring support strategies for businesses beyond recovery and unveiling the vision of the new president and CEO of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Let's embark on this informative journey. It's our pleasure to welcome Daniel Tish, a distinguished business, public policy and community leader with a rich background in corporate communications, public policy and community engagement. Daniel has been the driving force behind Argyle Communications, transforming it into Canada's largest management-owned engagement, communication and reputation advisory firm. With a career that includes significant contributions to the Canadian government and regular media appearances, Daniel brings a wealth of experience and insight to his role as the new president and CEO of Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Join us as we explore Daniel's journey, his insights into the small business climate in Ontario and his vision for the future. Uh, welcome to Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, Daniel. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, SK. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Uh, before we dive into the intricacies of your professional journey, I'm curious about something a bit more personal. Could you share with us a hobby or interest uh, outside of your work that has shaped your approach to leadership and business? Well, it's uh, the the one that jumps to mind is I've been a leader in the, in scouts for more than 20 years now. I, I became a scout leader when my older son was uh, just starting and he was just five years old and now he's 29. So, <laughs> so for a long time now, uh, almost, uh, 25 years, um, I've been, um, I've been leading our local scout group. And the most beautiful thing about it is that my older son, he started at five years old. He's now a leader with me. And my younger son, who's almost 17 is a, still a member of oh. the scout group. And it, it's a wonderful, um, learning experience because everybody's a volunteer and you have to respect that. And so it's a real spirit of shared leadership where there's sort of this mutual accountability, but also just an understanding that um, people have lives uh, and responsibilities outside the domain of, um, of scouting. Um, the other thing, I guess, is that it really is about relationships. And that's been key to my whole philosophy of leadership. It's, uh, you know, you have to earn a relationship with people often who are very different from you. In this case, you know, they may have different cultural backgrounds or socioeconomic backgrounds, but also, you know, you're met, you're, you're working with, um, with youth, right? With, right. Uh, so, so I've worked with, um, boys from age five to age 17, right? Um, and, you know, just learning and adapting, it's totally your strategy different experience, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's been a, f a phenomenal experience. Right. So every Monday night, even tonight, tonight I'm going to uh, wow. to to our the scout meeting as I have for almost 25 years. Wow. Today we are exploring a narrative of leadership with Daniel Tish, whose journey is marked by diverse experiences and pivotal decisions that have significantly influenced Ontario's business landscape. Uh, Daniel, uh, could you share with us your journey and the experiences that led you to your current role as a president and CEO of Ontario Chamber of Commerce? Well. Well, I started in the Canadian government and I, I did a, a, I did two degrees at Queen's University. Uh, my first degree was in political studies. My second degree was in business. But between those two degrees, I worked in Ottawa uh, in the Canadian government and I had the extraordinary opportunity to work for two federal cabinet ministers. I worked for the Minister of Immigration and then I worked for the Minister of Health and I worked with that minister when he became the minister of um, communications and then the minister of foreign affairs. So I had the opportunity to do some extraordinary things at a young age, not because I was anybody special, but because I happened to be in a position where I was advising um, uh, cabinet ministers. And, and so I got to see uh, just the challenges of developing public policy up close. So that was the first period of my career. I then went to, as I mentioned, and did an MBA. 
And that opened my eyes to opportunities in business. And at the time, I'd left my political staff job and I was advising Canadian companies on their telecommunications trade relationships with the United States. And I was 29 years old and I'd never worked in business before. And I thought, you're advising business, but you've never worked in business. And that led to a shift in my path. And I came to Toronto and I joined a consulting firm. And for the next 25 years, uh, I was a private sector, initially um, an executive, and ultimately I, I bought my own business and built it over time, uh, over the over the next two decades, into uh, quite a large communications consulting business. Argal Communications, right? That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. It, yeah, it was. I mean, it, it's an extraordinary journey. I mean, I, I'm very. I feel very fortunate because when when my partner and I bought the company, it was a very small boutique. It was um, 10 people, and and by 2023, when I stepped down and I sold significant. Uh, a portion of my shares in the business, most of my shares in the business, uh, it was the largest in Canada, and so um, with ten offices, and so um, a lot of challenges along the way. Um, you know, everybody who's ever owned a business knows it's not a straight line right. to success. Uh, there are lots of ups and downs. There are lots of heartaches and challenges and mistakes and failures. And the beautiful thing I think about business and small business in particular is just how resilient people are right and and to me it was uh an unforgettable experience right and that's a fascinating journey daniel you know it's evident that your experiences uh, have sculpted your lead uh, leadership vision what inspired you to transition from argyle communications to focusing on the broader business community in ontario at the occ well on paper, it looked like an absolutely perfect fit. You know, when the the job came available, and I heard about it uh, last year, last I guess it was um, August or September when I first heard about it, because it um, there's an element to it that is about understanding and working with business, particularly small business. And as an entrepreneur, that spoke to me. There's an element about uh, helping to influence public policy, working with government, and you know helping translate the 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 perspectives of the business community particularly small business that's most of our 60,000 members are small businesses and and to 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 bring realistic solutions to government right um there's obviously the communications element to it and I was at, at Argyle I was practicing communications and community and public engagement for 20 years and so if I look at these things um, communications and community engagement, policy and advocacy, and business, right? Um, those three pieces seem remarkable, you know, coming together in one job. Okay. And uh, and and then the, the question was, well, okay, I know the job seems good on paper, but uh, do I, am I aligned? Are my values aligned with the, with the, the, the board and with the staff and with the, the chamber network? And Every meeting I had convinced me more and more that this is an incredible uh, team of people uh, that um, that are doing some very important and valuable things that are helping businesses and helping helping government think about the long term and how we get to long term inclusive and sustainable prosperity. Right. So I accepted the job November first and put on my suit and uh, went to the Ontario Economic Summit to meet uh, <laughs> yeah, to meet saw, the community. Yeah, I saw the Ontario Economic Summit video and like, you know, I, I was impressed. And also, I think, I believe like, you know, your vision, your past experience of more than 20 years in the business industry and also your values, like, and your position at OCC, I think it's all a match, you know, like everything will go in hand in hand. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I... I I realize I still, you know, I come back to this idea of relationships. It starts with relationships, right? right? Um, you know, and uh, and you know, to build a to 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 do something important and valuable and constructive with a relationship, you need trust. Right. You need mutual trust, and you need to understand each other. And so, I'm trying to do a lot of listening. Obviously, I have my perspectives and my hopes and aspirations, but I'm also trying to listen to learn and. And just kind of understand the perspective of of our members, our, our business members, and also our chamber members, those who lead and manage uh, almost 160 
individual local chambers across Ontario. And then finally, of course, there's my team, uh, an exceptional group of people uh, that um, are very driven by the purpose and the mission and the impact that uh, that we achieve. Right. We at Canadian SME, we are very fortunate, as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, like we were very fortunate to work with OCC uh, since we started in 2018. And as you rightly said, the team is very passionate. Like, you know, they are, they, they understand the mission of Ontario Chamber of Commerce, okay. like in empowering Canadian, uh, Ontario small business owners. In the light of your transition, Daniel, could you share how your experiences at Ergal Communications have uh, influenced your approach and priorities in leading the OCC, you know, especially in the terms of engaging with and advocating for broader business community in Ontario? Well, uh, yeah, I come at it through, uh, primarily through the lens of someone who's been involved in public and community engagement for a long time. And so I think that there's a wonderful opportunity right now to, as we begin our new five-year strategic plan. We have a new strategic plan and, and my really my first big job this year, in addition to all of the different programs we run and to ensure those keep running with, uh, with excellence is uh, to think about what's the next five years look like. And what we want to do, my leadership team and I is, um, and my board, is we want to engage the Ontario business community in a conversation. And that conversation is all about what is the purpose of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and what is our winning aspiration, right? So we see ourselves not just as an association, but we are also a business, even if we're a nonprofit business, but we're a business and we're a brand. And so how can we use that in the way that's most impactful, right? And, and how do we ensure that we are delivering results for our members? You know, our members are our clients and, uh, you know, in some ways I've been a consultant for 25 years and, uh, I've traded clients for members, but it's really the same thing. It's ensuring that there's um, a high level of engagement, a high level of satisfaction, and that um, we're delivering meaningful results in everything we do. Right. Uh, Daniel, you know, your narrative is not just a journey. It's a blueprint for transformative leadership that enriches both the business community and society at large. Now, understanding the pulse of small businesses is critical in today's economic landscape. Let's delve into the current state of small businesses in Ontario. How are small businesses doing in Ontario? And can we speak to the OCC's most recent report on business confidence within the province? Sure. Well, I guess there's there's bad news and good news, right? <laughs> the the bad news is that business confidence and particularly small business confidence, uh, SK, is is very low. In fact, it's never been lower. According in in our survey, we've been doing the survey since 2012, and this year, unfortunately, had the lowest result ever. Only 13 percent of Ontario businesses are confident in Ontario's economic outlook, and it's. The confidence is lowest among small businesses. Small businesses, only 12%. So medium-sized businesses, 21. Large businesses, 22. Not great, but a little bit higher better. than small businesses. Probably a bit higher. And so, you know, we tried to understand why that is, right? And part of it is the macro-level environment. Obviously, economic uncertainty, political polarization, social upheaval, technological disruption, environmental risk, right. climate change. You look at the macro-level and... It's not an optimistic time. And then you look at the micro level, uh, there are a lot of small businesses that um, still haven't recovered from the pandemic. And many emerge from that with uh, heavy debt burdens and just real difficulty in kind of reopening and, and navigating this new environment, right? Um, and so we've been really trying to understand that and to adapt our programs and our policy and our advocacy work accordingly. But the good news in the survey, I guess, is that while businesses are, are not positive about the economy, they are positive about their own internal outlook. So almost half of businesses, I think it was 48%, they're confident in their own internal outlook. A majority of businesses in Ontario, small businesses, expect to grow this year. And so I think the challenge for organizations like ours and for our government partners is to help them act on that belief, right? Because if you believe you're going to grow, then there's an opportunity to take responsible risks, to invest in your growth, 
And really, I think the policy and regulatory environment and the services we provide to business have to strengthen you know that confidence right. and 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 enable them to act on that belief right now like what are the key strategies the occ is planning to implement uh, to bolster business confidence and address these challenges well there are different ways that we do this um one is of course through our policy and advocacy so it's understanding the needs of business and effectively presenting them to government, not just saying, here are the concerns, but also saying, here are some policy solutions. So we have an outstanding, very strong policy team, and we have a strong public affairs team. We're meeting regularly with businesses. In fact, this afternoon, I'm right after this, I'm going to meet with um, uh, the uh, the Minister of, um, of Public and Business Services. Um, and so, you know, um, it's a very important conversation. So that's, that's the first thing we do. Uh, the second thing is... W- our member chambers are providing a lot of uh, counsel and advice and services to business every single day, right? And we, in turn, are helping to provide our member chambers, our 157 local chambers, we're providing them with analysis of policy and regulations. You know, when they have a need, we try to be very responsive in helping them address that need. And the third and final thing I'd say is we have a series of programs which we administer um, and those programs help in a variety of ways, right? So to give you just one example, one of our programs is helping businesses go digital, right? And, you know, so how do they take your, how do you take your, how do I take my business online? How do I set up e-commerce for my business, right? That's just one example, but we also are doing work around, um, helping them learn about managing a more diverse workforce. Um, we have programs that help connect them, connect businesses to uh, university and college graduates so that um, who who are interested in work integrated learning opportunities. And so these are the sorts of programs that we're running in the hope of um, helping to serve our mission and to make small businesses stronger. Thanks for sharing those insights with us. Like based on the findings like uh, Daniel, what key challenges and opportunities do you see for small businesses in the near future? Well, if I look at the environment right now, um, you know, skills development is a really big one, right? which is why we're focused very much on on that. Um, going digital, right? Digital adoption, it's a really big one, right? AI has the opportunity to revolutionize right. business and, and make business more efficient. It brings challenges as well. But I think if you look at the impact and the growth achieved by businesses that make smart investments in digital and in AI, they grow much faster, like many times faster right. uh, than than their peers. So, you know, we're, we're focusing on those sorts of things. But other challenges, mental health, right? Mental health is a very significant issue right now, which we're only beginning to understand as a, as a society. And so that's why one of our reports last year was specifically focused on what we call the echo pandemic, mm-hmm. right? So we had the the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the echo right. pandemic effectively was a crisis in mental health. And so that's complicated, right? So we're trying to provide resources to help businesses understand the issue and manage the issue, but we're also trying to work with government to enhance resources, you know, that are provided. And that's not just you know, obviously the province is in charge of healthcare, but if you look at the impact of mental health, you look at addictions, right? I mean, that crosses all levels of government. And so it's a complex problem and it requires partnership to address. So those are a few examples. Right. Uh, your insights, Daniel, offer a panoramic view of the small business uh, climate, highlighting the crucial interplay between data-driven strategies and the human spirit of entrepreneurship. To all these small business owners watching, the resilience you have shown in these challenging times is truly the backbone of our economy. Your adaptability and perseverance, as highlighted in the Ontario Economic Report, are what will shape the future of Ontario's business landscape. If you are a small business owner or entrepreneur, this next segment is especially for you. We are about to dive into how the Ontario Chamber of Commerce is tailoring its initiatives to meet your unique needs, ensuring your business not only survives but thrives in this evolving economic uh, environment. Uh, Daniel, the OCC's role in nurturing the success of small businesses across Ontario is invaluable. Let's explore the initiatives in place. 
is what initiatives is the ontario chamber of commerce currently undertaking to support small business success across the province sure well we're we're doing a lot of different things right you know that uh, that we believe and and certainly we the, the feedback we get is that it's been really valuable for business um the first is um we are largely through our chamber network 157 local chambers across ontario we are providing data and analysis on public policy and regulations to help to help chambers and in turn their members their local members understand the impact of changes in policy and regulation you know on on individual businesses um second in our policy development we're producing a lot of reports which we hope aren't just something that sits on a shelf a real a real shelf or a digital shelf but is actually usable for small business so for example uh, i i mentioned earlier when we were chatting i mentioned the you know, report we did on mental health okay. and how small businesses can better understand the issue and act on the issue in their workplaces um but we also you know produced a report on indigenous reconciliation right um and so if you think about the whole diversity and inclusion agenda um the a business is not going to be as effective and as competitive if it is not seen as attractive to all segments of society right uh, it needs the broadest possible skill set and tools and it needs to be engaged with key groups and key key organizations in their community and so by helping businesses understand how to build more diverse workforces and and how to engage and and um and and pursue that reconciliation agenda we believe and we hope that that will be you know helpful so those are examples but all year round we're releasing a series of reports um you know we've done one we've done work around housing we've done work around um around uh, tra transit and transportation innovation so lots of different areas climate change and and cli climate adaptation and and i guess the third way and the third focus that we have is on those programs which i alluded to earlier which are helping businesses hire skilled workers that are helping businesses take their businesses online you know adopt e-commerce more effectively we're developing learning management systems where businesses can you know be part of our program and have access to a range of resources about all sorts of topics that can be useful and valuable in building their business right as you rightly said uh, daniel you know like these reports are not just reports you know like it provides a valuable insights uh, where uh, entrepreneurs or small business owners like me can actually implement this into like practically we can use those insights yeah. uh, and uh, you know like i have been following the ontario chamber of commerce uh, publications very closely and it's a great valuable resources being provided by your chamber uh, daniel your vision for the occ support of small businesses uh you know paints a picture of a thriving ecosystem where growth and resilience go hand in hand daniel as the new president and ceo of ontario chamber of commerce what is your vision for ontario's business community and how do you plan to achieve it if i had to sum up where i uh hope to go and 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 my aspiration for the ontario chamber of commerce it's three words inclusive sustainable prosperity right. because obviously prosperity is the foundation it's what we're all trying to build but it's important that that prosperity be inclusive of all businesses and workers and communities and that it be sustainable right for the long term right. and so if i think about what's required to achieve that a few things the first is we have to help businesses and support businesses particularly small businesses at a very challenging time right through our policy through our advice through our advocacy through our programs right it's helping make them stronger so that they understand uh the right investments and the right decisions they need to make for their businesses um the second is partnership we have an incredibly strong partnership in the ontario chamber between small businesses mid-sized businesses large businesses we have academic institutions we have labor unions right and and so when you put it all together nobody else brings such a broad coalition of interest together in quite the same way to bring actionable advice to government right and i think that that's a real strength and and a real priority and the third piece is leadership it's the opportunity not just to think about representing the needs of business today but it's thinking ahead 
with our research and our analysis and looking at what business is going to need tomorrow and how we get ready for that future. And if you look at the Ontario Economic Report, there are various pillars that are there, right? So we talk about a skilled and inclusive workforce. We talk about smart and sustainable infrastructure. We talk about a competitive business environment and how critical that is, taxes and regulation and everything else. And then finally, we also look at healthy communities because a community is essential in order to in, for the sustainability of a business, right? In order to attract the best people, it's the, the people have, they've got to be strong, good services. There has to be good health care. Uh, there has to, they have to feel safe mm. in, in the place that they live and work and, and invest. And so it's looking at all of those things and trying to pursue policies that can make that vision a reality. Right. And Daniel, like how, how your vision incorporate the principles of inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability? Well, that's fundamental to me. You know, um, uh, my parents and I, we came here when, when, when I was a small boy, um, where we came from Latin America. And I remember how my parents struggled and those early years weren't easy. They didn't come with money, right? <laughs> um, they came with very little, um, but over time, you know, my father, like his father and his grandfather, right, um, was a business owner and he was able to be very successful in his field. And I remember watching that and learning those, those lessons. Those are the valuable lessons we learn, right? A Absolutely. Way, right? And so, and so for me, it's in my blood. Um, and so I think a lot about just, uh, how we ensure that when newcomers you know, come here or people who were born here, but, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, have more barriers to participation in the workforce, right? Um, because they're racialized people, because, uh, they have, they're, they're people living with disabilities, um, because they're indigenous, uh, you know, what, what have you, there are many different reasons that, uh, and, and many different, um, barriers that different people have to full inclusion in the workforce. And so when I talk about inclusive, sustainable prosperity, that word inclusion, it's really important, right? Yeah. It's one of our values at the Ontario Chamber. And I also think that it is an economic competitive advantage for Ontario that we have this incredibly diverse workforce and diverse society, but we have to pay more attention to how we include everybody if we are to truly achieve our potential. Right. Uh, your holistic approach, Daniel, intertwines inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability with economic prosperity, setting a new paradigm for business leadership. Now let's discuss about the recently released Ontario Economic Report. The Ontario Economic Report provides invaluable insights into the province's economic dynamics. Now that the 2024 edition is out, let's delve into its findings and implications. The 2024 uh, economic, Ontario Economic Report has been released, shedding light on various economic challenges and opportunities. Could you highlight the most critical insights from this report? and their significance for Ontario's business community. Sure. Well, I mean, the first, of course, uh, which we were talking about earlier is uh, just business confidence in the economic outlook is very low, right. but their confidence in themselves is high. So it's a bit of a paradox, right? And so our challenge, you know, is is to uh, give them the tools and the, and, and the strategies to act on that belief and invest in that belief. And so I think that's a very key implication. Um, it's also important to know where they're struggling, right? Um, and so certainly if I had to identify, uh, you know, a couple of issues, you know, one is, um, th is the debt loads that they have, right? Which are preventing them from investing in productivity and, and equipment and, and, you know, things that can make their businesses more competitive in the future. And the other one, which really affects businesses because it affects their employees is mental health. And so if you're looking at this environment, there are economic challenges, there are also social challenges that are affecting business. Um, at the macro level, the challenge we have, one of the biggest challenges we have as, as a society and an economy is that Ontario's productivity is declining. And so that's like a national pay cut, right? When productivity goes down, because inevitably our standard of living falls behind our peers. And so we have to think very strategically 
about how we make businesses more productive. And so again, that leads me back to some of the recommendations which we're making in the report around infrastructure, around a more competitive business environment, um, around uh, the skill set and, and the inclusion in our workforce, and also around how we develop healthier communities. Right. And also there are uh, like different insights in the 2024 economic, uh, Ontario economic report. Like uh, how do you see it shaping the policy making strategic uh, decisions for businesses and government entities in Ontario? Well, the great thing I think is that uh, the Ontario economic report, thanks to our team, has become something which is eagerly anticipated. And so it's widely read by members of the business community, businesses of all sizes. And it's also very carefully uh, examined by government. And so when we launched it last week at the Empire Club of Canada, you know, you had, you know, many representatives of the government who were there. We had a senior cabinet minister, uh, Caroline Mulrooney, right. president of the Treasury Board, who uh, who was there and she was part of the dialogue afterwards. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to discussing the findings with uh, the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. because we have the Ontario budget coming up and we've made a series of recommendations mm -hmm. that will surprise nobody because they're very much aligned <laughs> with the the themes and the strategies in the report. So, you know, we feel very good about our partnership with government. Um, you know, obviously, government doesn't always listen, but, uh, but we find that, um, you know, I shouldn't say they don't always listen. They always listen. Sometimes they don't heed <laughs> our recommendations. <laughs> but more often than not, we find that over the long term, they do because one thing that unites leaders of all political parties is they all want more uh, a more affordable place to live in Ontario, right? Affordability is a big challenge. And the other thing they want is they want to invest in our economic future and the health of our communities. And so they may have different visions about how to do that, but they all very much believe that that's what's important. Right. And then in the report also emphasizes the importance of immigration in economic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share your thoughts on how Ontario can better leverage immigration to bolster the business landscape? Well, immigration for many years, uh, for as long as I've been alive, in fact, you know, and I've been, in Can as long as I've been in Canada, has been an absolutely critical pillar of Canada's growth and its economic success, right? And, and the the beautiful thing, I think, about the society we've built is that it really does, despite all of its flaws, it has a high degree of social cohesion despite being so diverse. And I think that the challenge we face now is that we are accepting an historically high number of immigrants to Canada, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm in favor of immigration as an immigrant myself. However, what is not keeping pace and has not kept pace, and we're seeing this, is the structures and the systems to, into, to, to house people, right? You know, to give them services they need, to prepare them and integrate them into the workforce by recognizing their credentials. And so that is really fundamental, I think, to how we work with government and think about, okay, how can we reduce those barriers to participation, but how can we also get the federal government and the provincial government and our municipal governments to work together so that um, we can continue to make immigration a strength for uh, for our, our province and our country. Uh, thank you for, uh, for sharing those uh, valuable insights, uh, Daniel. The insights from the 2024 Ontario Economic Report offers a comprehensive view of our economic uh, landscape, serving as a, a critical tool uh, for driving informed decisions and fostering economic growth in the province. To our entrepreneurs and small business owners, the findings from the 2024 Ontario Economics Report are not just numbers and forecasts. They are insights that can guide your strategies, help you navigate economic challenges and seize opportunities for growth. Your agility and innovative spirit are what will turn these insights into actionable success. Daniel, before we conclude, could you offer a piece of advice to our listeners, especially the small business owners and entrepreneurs navigating the complexities of today's economic environment? Well, I guess I'd have to say, as a long-time business owner myself, right, um, I think at times like these, there are two things that I would say, for me, are really important and valuable, right? The one is, you don't have to walk alone, right? There are resources, there are partnerships, there are other businesses in your community 
that are part of the Ontario Chamber Network. And there you can find peer support, you can find resources, you can find learning, you can find tools that are available to you, often at very low cost or no cost, to help make your businesses stronger. So think about how you can leverage this community and this network and these partnerships so that you can help make your own decisions, of course, but informed by knowledge of what's working for others, right? I think that that's that that peer support is really important at this time. The other thing I would say is um, we talk a lot about skills and labor and and you know the challenges in recent years of matching the needs of a business with the availability of labor. And so that's not just recruiting great employees, it's retaining them. It's keeping them. And so I believe it's important to understand that while your customers may come and go, your employees, you know, you are, on their, um, you are on their CV forever, right? <laughs> and I always said when I was running a business that I try to be worthy of that honor. And so I would say, engage your employees, be transparent with them, tell them how it's going and what you're, you know, uh, you know, engage them in finding solutions, right? Because I think having a strong value proposition and a motivated and, and inspired workforce in the end, that's going to get all of us through uh, what we know are uh, our challenging times. Right. Uh, Daniel, thank you for sharing your profound insights and vision with us today. It was a great pleasure hosting you. That's my pleasure. Thank you, SK. Thank you so much. We extend our heartfelt thanks to Daniel Tish for joining us today on the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast and sharing his valuable insights into the Ontario business landscape and his vision for the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. The Daniel's leadership and strategic approach to supporting the business community are pivotal in driving economic growth and competitiveness across the province. Today's discussion emphasizes the critical role of informed leadership, strategic support, and community engagement in nurturing a thriving, resilient, and inclusive business ecosystem in Ontario. A special thanks to our partners, exclusive banking partner RBC, exclusive shipping partner UPS, exclusive accounting software partner Zero, and our exclusive email partner Constant Contact for this support. To our listeners, we encourage you to engage with the initiatives and resources offered by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce to propel your business forward. Remember to subscribe to Canadian SME Small Business Magazine by visiting canadiansme.ca for more enlightening conversations and practical advice. Thank you for tuning in to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. Your engagement fuels our mission to explore and share the stories that shape the Canadian SME sector. Join us next time as we continue to uncover the journeys, challenges and successes of small and medium-sized enterprises across Canada. Together, let's keep learning, growing and innovating.